morning, happy Wednesday. Hope you guys are well and happy and safe um, and not too bored. What have you been doing to keep yourselves from not getting bored? I have been through my whole house knocking on the walls to see if I could find any secret passages that I might have missed uh, that the builders have put in there in secret. But our house was built in the 70s by the council. And I don't think that they put any secret passages in there, which is really disappointing. Um, but tonight I'm going to go up into the loft to see if I can find any old treasure maps. Um, or magical chests and I'll let you know how that goes but this is today's story and it's from this book again Four Corners Tales from the British Isles retold by Tom Knight um, and this story today is from Cornwall who's been to Cornwall some of you might live in Cornwall if you are you if you do you're very lucky this is Cornwall down here on the bottom foot of England uh, and it's about a pisky. Now a pisky are like little fairies or pixies. The Cornish folk call them piskies. And this one is about a pisky called Omfra. And it's called The Pisky Who Lost Her Laugh. A tale from England. All across the moorlands of Devon and Cornwall in the west of England live creatures called piskies. They're small mischievous folk and the smallest and most mischievous of them all was called Omfra. Omfra liked to trick people, and her most favourite trick was to leap out at people and make them jump. The louder they yelped, the louder Omfra laughed. One night, when the moon was high in the sky, all the piskies were gathered on the moor. A fiddler was playing a merry tune, and everyone was dancing. Suddenly, Omfra leapt out from behind a rock, and shouted, BOO! Look, there's Umphra hiding behind the rock, waiting to surprise the fiddler. The fiddler was so shocked that he jumped out of his boots and broke a string on his fiddle. Umphra laughed so hard, she thought that she would never stop. Fat tears rolled down her cheeks and her shoulders shook. However, Umphra's laughing soon turned to choking and her round face went from red to purple to blue. One of the larger piskies grabbed Omphra by the foot and shook her upside down. As Omphra spluttered a huge cough, there was a loud clap of thunder. It was so loud, it knocked all the piskies onto the ground. Once they had recovered from their fright, the piskies gathered round Omphra, she was still sitting on the ground, but looked most unhappy. They clapped her on the back and urged her to get up and dance with them. Omphra just shook her head and sat morosely on a rock. This was most unlike Omphra, but Grandpa Oblo, the oldest and wisest of all the piskies, knew just what had happened. You've lost your laugh, he said. You must go and find it or you'll never be yourself again. So Umphra set out in search of her laugh, following the west wind. She walked for many days across fields, over hills and through woods. As Umphra stood on top of one of the great hills where the ancient kings of Cornwall were buried, she thought she heard the whisper of a chuckle high up on the air. Just then, a mole popped her head out of the earth. She told Umphra that she must be careful on Bodmin Moor, for there were willow the wisps there. Will-o'-the-wisps were spirits made from light, and they liked to trick travellers into straying from their path. Umphra thanked them all for her advice and hurried across the marshes. Little lights were flickering here and there. They were so pretty that Umphra wanted to follow them, but she remembered what the mole had told her. Instead, she twitched her pointed ears until she heard the faintest breath of her laugh in the distance. Omphra followed her laugh across Bodmin Moor until she reached King Arthur's castle. Taking off her hat, Omphra respectfully stepped into the great stone hall. King Arthur himself was sitting on a large throne with a small blue bird perched on the end of his fingertip. There was a bird outside my window then, do you think it's, it was the small bird from this story? Omphra bowed so low that her nose touched the cold stone. Pardon me, Your Majesty, but I've lost my laugh. Have you seen it? Yes, I have, said King Arthur cheerfully. 
He explained to Omphra that he had snatched the laugh from the wind's hand and turned it into a bird to keep it safe. With that, the bird hopped from the king's finger onto Omphra's shoulder. As it sang its sweet song, Omphra felt her laugh bubble up from her belly and burst from her mouth. She was herself once more. Now, will you promise to look after your laugh more carefully from now on? Asked King Arthur. There's King Arthur and there's Omphra bowing. Omphra agreed that she certainly would look after her laugh and she promised not to play tricks on anyone ever again. She couldn't wait to get back to the dance and her friends. So Omphra said goodbye to King Arthur and skipped all the way home. Her laugh rang through the countryside as clear as a bell. Every creature that heard it felt as happy as Omphra. So, if you ever see a pisky with a small blue bird flying around her shoulders, don't be afraid. That's only Omphra, and she definitely won't play any tricks on you. There's Omphra and her blue bird, and that's who you've got to look out for. All right, take care. See you soon. Bye.